Did you know there's a transform effect within the effects library of the edit page within DaVinci Resolve, and using it can make your life a little bit easier? Here's five examples of common tasks which are made easier by using the transform tool on the edit page in DaVinci Resolve. Tip number one, cropping and transforming. So here we are on the edit page within DaVinci Resolve. Now I've got this image set up on my timeline. This will of course work with any image or any video. And the first thing we need to do, click on effects top left hand corner to open up your effects library. Come on down to open effects. And then from this list, scroll right the way down until you get to this Resolve FX transform area. Grab the transform effect and drop it onto your image or video on your timeline. Give it a click so it's highlighted in red. Open up the inspector top right hand corner go to effects and you'll see the transform settings within there. If you don't see all of these options, simply click on the word transform at the top to expand that down. Now from here, you've got these position controls, so you can just change the X, the Y, the zoom, the rotation, and everything else. Let me just reset those. If we scroll down, we've got this little crop tick box within the advanced options. If we tick that, then we get these crop controls, so I can crop in from the left and crop in from the right. Now the reason this is better than these standard ones is you get basically twice the amount of control. So now I've cropped in, if I use these positions I can move this crop wherever I want. So it almost acts like a mask and I can move this wherever I want it. So let's say I want this image over on the left like so. If we then hop back into the video tab and use the standard transform tools at the top, I can zoom in, I can zoom out, I can position, I can rotate, but what's actually happening is we're rotating the image within that mask, but the mask doesn't change. If we want to change the mask itself, we go back to effects, transform, and then we change the location. Now this allows you to do more than you can do with the standard controls. So let's say I want to rotate this mask, let's zoom right in because I'm putting together a slideshow or a collage of images, but I want the image within the mask to be the right way around. I can jump back onto the video tab, change the rotation angle, get that level again, and we've got something that looks like that. Using the two different transform tools together gives you much more granular control to get your images or video looking exactly as you want them. Now that technique works perfectly as well for my tip number two, picture in picture. So I've got my timeline set up here. I've got this video on top, which I want to be my picture in picture, and then I've got my main track underneath. So same thing, we're gonna grab transform and drop it on there like so, give it a click, inspector, effects, and then we've got the transform effects within here. Now this time what we want to do, grab this zoom slider and zoom out, and then we can just use our position X and our position Y to put our image or our video in the correct place like so. Now if you do want to do a crop, come down, you can use the cropping once again to crop in from the left and crop in from the right. Now the same thing applies. Let's say that my face is a bit too small on here, I want to zoom it in. I can just hop back over to the video tab, I can zoom this in, change the position, all without affecting the frame at all, getting it looking absolutely perfect. Now there's a bonus tip here as well. If we go to effects, again, underneath the cropping, you've got this edge rounding. Slide that slider all the way up and you've got yourself a nice circular picture in picture instead of the usual square one. My tip number three, corner pinning. So as you can see in this setup here, I've got this image of this Apple Mac thing and I wanna put my face on the screen. So we need to corner pin it. It's at a slightly jazzy angle, so I can't just use the usual controls. So what we're gonna do, grab our transform and drop it on our clip like so. And again, inspector, effects, and then into the transform area. Now this time, what you need to do, in the control mode, it says sliders, use the drop down and change that to canvas. Now it'll look like not much has happened. Underneath the preview window here, you've got this little drop down. Click on the little down arrow and click on the open effects overlay. And then you'll see this grid appear on your preview window. You can click on any of these squares to make changes to your image. So if I grab this middle one, I can just move it around like so. And then if I grab any of the top corner boxes, we can just move the corners to pin them in place. So I'm gonna put this left one right in there, this one over on the right, roughly in the right place. And we'll just drag these around till it's looking about right. Now it can be a little bit difficult because of this big white border. If you need to get rid of that so you can see what you're doing, just click on this FX to disable it. That looks pretty close, but I need to adjust the top right, so I'm going to turn it on, we'll drag up a bit, turn it off, and that's starting to look pretty good. Still within the FX transform area, come on down to the edge softness. I could just give it a little bit of softness just to soften the edge, hit play, and job done. That's starting to look pretty good. 
Simple, right? Corner pinning done. Now, obviously, that's on a static image. If it was moving, you're using a video, you'd have to do some keyframes or maybe some tracking. If you'd like me to do a tutorial on that next time, let me know down in the comment section below. Now, tip number four, edge reflect. So I've got this portrait image here. I'm going to grab transform, drop it on there, effects, same as usual. Now, come on down into the advanced options and you've got edge behavior and by default, it's transparent. If we change that to reflect, it will reflect the outsides of our image. So now it's filling the full frame like so. We've also got the option to wrap around, which will basically just duplicate the image as many times as you like. We can then come on to the standard controls here and zoom out and we can see we've got sort of a wallpaper of all of our images. That's with the wrap around. If we change that to reflect, we've got something that looks like that. It gives us a cool little mirror effect. Now that's kind of cool on its own because you can do loads of different things. You can rotate this and you can use the pitch and the yaw to create these infinite walls of whatever you've got on your timeline. This works perfectly well with photos and videos. Now, another really cool tip for this, if you grab a logo, I've got a PNG file here like so, do the same thing, effects. I'm gonna use wrap around for this and then we can zoom out. We can make an infinite wall of our logo or whatever we want to do. If we were to lower the opacity, we could put text over that and it looked really, really cool. Right, last but not least, tip number five. I've got a cool double vision slash double exposure kind of effect which works really well for things like music videos. So I've got Mr. Dancing Dude here. I'm gonna grab my transform, drop it on there and effects, same place. Now what you need to do here, come on down to this global blend and then expand that and you've got blend. So at the moment it's 100%, so we can only see the effect. If we lower this blend to about 50, then the effect is gonna have a 50% transparency. What that means is we can then adjust the zoom. So I'm gonna zoom in a bit, maybe add a bit of a rotation, maybe zoom in a bit more, something like that. We can see the original footage underneath, but we can also see our footage with our transform effect applied. So now if I hit play, we've got this double vision, sort of double exposure kind of effect. And you can mess around with the pitch, with the yaw, do all this sort of funky stuff. You could even change this to reflect. We've still got our original footage underneath, but we've got all of these mirrored layers as well. And you can do loads of cool stuff with that. There you go, the transform effect. Are you using it? If not, why not? You should be, it's awesome. Let me know down below. Thanks for watching, take it easy. I'll see you next time.